hey, if your kid's struggling with a motor apraxia, I want to talk about a video that I actually did uh, a few months ago, really. And it's about a kid that we had in our practice that had a motor apraxia and what we did to help him to start re restoring some of these motor systems. And I'm going to kind of break this video down for you guys really simply here. So first and foremost, let's just play it here and we'll get started. With the motor apraxia, I want to explain to you what you can do to help him. This kid came in and he had a motor apraxia and what that really means. So when you have a motor apraxia, what you'll commonly see, number one, is you'll see abnormal movement, obviously, but you'll see really poor balance because balance is, um, it directly comes from an area of the brain called the cerebellum, the midline aspect of that. And that cerebellum is really what's deficit. That and its connection to the motor cortex is really what's not functioning well in these kids. And our balance centers play a lot into that. Primitive reflexes play a lot to that to help us to develop that cerebellum so we can develop our motor coordination. Let me get started here means is that typically an area of the brain called their cerebellum isn't functioning efficiently. I'm looking for what's called a tonic labyrinthine reflex there. So when I tip his head back, I'm looking to see if he hyperextends and starts losing his balance. When I bring his head down, I'm looking to see if everything flexes forward and he starts losing his balance. That's called a tonic labyrinthine. It should go away right around three and a half years and it plays a lot into the development of our balance centers. Coordinates all of your motor movement. And then I'm just looking at smooth, his balance. This is just a man's efficient. test Three here. Three ways to rehab that. Number one is you have to get rid of primitive reflexes. And you can see at the beginning of this child. This actually, right here, where he turns his head and his arm drops out on the opposite side. That's known as an asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. That should go away at about six months of life before we start to crawl. It helps us to develop the right and left side of our body to work together appropriately. A lot of primitive reflexes. He had an so we shouldn't see that response. We should see his arms be able to stay straight. And by the end, and then when we bring his head gone, down there, where he saw his arms drop out, that's called a symmetrical tonic neck reflex, and that should go away right around eight months of life. It helps us connect our upper and lower body to work together. And this is after therapy. He he got rid of those. So you can see now we bring his head down, his arms can stay straight. Cerebellum function more efficiently. Turn his head, his arms stay straight. More that's what we Number should two, see after those time frames. His balance centers. So first he couldn't balance almost at all. But then what happens is after working on his balance centers, we start getting better integrity of that cerebellum. So in this video, we're using a vibe plate because it, it gives us sensory feedback. We put them in challenging balancing positions, feet together, one foot in front of the other one, that type of thing. But then he's playing video games that make his eyes move. And it gives actually th this one, not specifically, but there's other ones that give him the perception that he's moving. So we can actually start retraining his balance centers by using video games, which is pretty fun. So then what happens is balance improves. Which and then we're using lasers. You saw that we're using lasers to get more energy to that cerebellum. We need to have good balance. And now he can stand, function. maintain balance. And number three, we started working on getting his... If your kid's... Last part of that was getting his eyes to work together appropriately. So let's just kind of break this down real quick. When we look at the cerebellum, what we're looking at is this area of the brain back here. And there's a midline aspect, and that coordinates the midline of our body. It co coordinates our core stability, coordinates our balance centers. Intermediate areas, as we get a little bit farther out, coordinates our shoulders and our hips. And then the lateral areas are what coordinate our hands and our mouth and our feet to move appropriately. Well, if that cerebellum isn't well developed, we can't create coordinated movements. Therefore, we're going to have motor issues or motor apraxias. Um, I'm going to give you just a couple resources here. So biggest thing that I would recommend highly is looking into primitive reflexes these are all you just go to pubmed put how you can look this up really easy is put primitive reflexes and motor development primitive reflexes and autism primitive reflexes and something else you'll start getting a whole bunch of different research articles i've read most of these just from writing my primitive reflex book or stuff like that i've read pretty much all these but what you'll consistently see in all these studies is primitive reflexes are highly associated with motor delays because when they don't develop appropriately, our motor systems can't develop appropriately. Another resource that you guys can do is, um, I have this on my Limitless Foundation. Oh, let me, sorry, let me get this here. On my limitlessfoundation.co up here, this is my website, it's my educational website. If you go to here, I give like, I have like 1500 free research articles in there that you can read all about neurodevelopment. It's a great resource. And then I even have a course for parents on primitive reflexes. So if you guys need any help with anything there, let us know. And then if you're a provider, I actually have courses for providers that teach them how to work on primitive reflexes, how to help kids development of delays. So if you guys need any of that, just, just go ahead and let me know. But I hope that video helps you guys. I hope that helps you with understanding motor apraxias a little bit more efficiently. 
because it is a complex task, but it, it all comes back to that cerebellum and how the cerebellum is coordinating the motor strip. And if you can get better function of the, the cerebellum, you can get much, much better motor function really quickly. So I hope this helps you guys. Have an awesome day.